Hello, good morning. We are welcome to ATP Live this morning. As you know, our usual routine, we, we have one topic or the other to discuss. So this morning we'll be discussing about immunization. But before I begin, let me introduce myself. I am Folusha Akpanetuk, and our speaker for today, as usual, is Dr. Benisola Boyede. Let's welcome her to the show this morning. Yeah. <clears throat> Good morning, everyone, and thank you so much for joining us on uh, ATP Live this morning. And uh, like Felicia said, this morning we'll be discussing about um, immunization. And like I, we rightly said at the beginning of the year that this year ATP Live is going to be at the, about the topics that parents and mothers want us to talk about. Whereas on our group discussion, we'll be talking about what you really want us to talk about. So this morning we are here. If you have questions, you can drop it in comments and it will be featured. We encourage you to share the videos to your friends, your family, to your pages, your timeline, so that other people can join us this morning. And we look forward to a very um, fruitful discussion. So you're yeah, welcome to it if you like. Yeah. Thank you, Dr. Bemi. Thank you very much. We thank you for having you today, this morning. Well, as we all know, immunization is always a scary thing to all mothers. What should I do? How should I go about it? Should I do this before going for immunization? Should I give that to my child after? So, Ma, what do you have to tell us about immunization? What should mothers and grandmas know about immunization, Ma? Okay, so let's first start by defining what is immunization. So the word immunization comes from the word immune. And when we say immune, it, you know, it's mean like, uh, let me backtrack by for, for explaining how the body, so normally our body fights against uh, foreign body germs and all that. And that's why we are not sick all the time, because most of the time, we are always being exposed to some of these germs and things like that, but most of us are not sick. And because our body has some uh, natural uh, agents or warriors or fighters that help us to fight those infections. And now, but sometimes, you know, this body immune system, they can be overwhelmed. They may not be able to deal with a particular bacteria or those bacteria or those particular microorganisms have found their own way of overcoming the body's um, uh immunity and so they can see cause diseases so we now know that uh immunization is a way of boosting the immune system of the body to be able to fight against those specific germs in other words you have prepared your body ready to recognize those particular uh microorganism bacteria viruses or whatever so that immediately the child's body is exposed to them instead of, of the child for the body to instead of the child becoming very sick and sometimes some of them even die from what we call uh, vaccine preventable diseases 
the body is already prepared. So when the body is exposed to that disease, it's all those, uh, it's like you have trained your warriors ready, so they're able to quickly fight that particular germ and that child will not be sick. So the child doesn't have to go through that process again. So immunization is one of the most successful public health intervention, you know, because we, before the era of immunization, lots of people were dying. You can remember things like smallpox, which has been completely eradicated mm -hmm. now, but because we have to develop immunization against it, so nobody is having smallpox again. So there are lots of diseases that children can die from, but because instead of the children getting those diseases, if we immunize them, if we have given them exposure, a kind of a, a controlled exposure to those particular uh, organisms, the body would have prepared ready, would have developed the what we call antibodies and all those things against them ready. So when the child now gets exposed to those diseases, then that child would not have those diseases because the body the immune system will be able to fight it. So that is what immunization is all about. So it's, a, it's one way by which we can prevent deaths in children. And for us as pediatricians, we take immunization as uh, very, very serious. Okay, thank you very you much. <laughs> yes, ma, very, very clear, ma. Thank you, ma. Now, what are the uh, list of uh, immunization expected of babies to get from the first day of life down to the next stages of life, ma? Okay, yeah. So, um, as we are continuing, if you have questions, don't forget to drop your questions now because I don't want us to start rushing through your questions at the end. <laughs> so, most of us are quite familiar with immunization. So, uh, we're just doing the introduction about immunization. So, we have different diseases and different vaccines. So, I really need to break down some words uh, for us. So, let's say, so, there are what we call vaccines, there's what we call vaccination. And there's what we call immunization. They are a little bit similar, but they are not the same. So vaccine is that particular thing, whether it's a drop or it's an injection that your baby is given. And that process of giving your baby that injection or that um, uh, the drops or whatever they give your baby is vaccination. Now, your, your child's body now needs to produce a response to that vaccination. And so it is when your child's body produces that response that we will now say that this child is now immunized. So sometimes because people can be vaccinated without getting immunized. So it's very important. It's rare, but it's, it does happen. And you will understand as we, uh, as we go on in the discussion this morning. So that is, so, so what are the vaccines available? Now, there are many diseases. Now, just to say that not all diseases are vaccines. So, you know, because I'm sure mothers would be like, oh, why can't you just give all the diseases vaccines? So, because there's a lot of research, there's a lot of uh, process going on into developing vaccine. For example, we've been trying to develop vaccine against malaria. We've been trying for ages and we are seeing out there. We've, we've, they made a lot of headway, but they are not idea. You can imagine if we have a vaccine against malaria and for those of us in Nigeria. <laughs> <laughs> it would be so wonderful. Be amazing, exactly. So, so we don't have vaccine against all diseases, and so, but I will tell you the ones we have. But these ones we have, they are the ones that we call killer. This disease used to be what we call killer diseases before, but now, but as research is going on, more vaccines will be developed, and then there are some vaccines that may be relevant in some parts of the world and may not be relevant in other parts of the world because sometimes people say, "Oh, I was in the UK, they didn't give me this. Oh, I'm in Nigeria, they gave me that. Oh, they gave this one in South Africa, but they are not giving us in Nigeria okay. because." It is not all diseases that are also of the same um, uh, severity or prevalence in, in each part of the world. So some countries will decide, okay, based, so we give vaccine for diseases that are so common that can likely kill many people. Okay, so let's start. But of course, majority of them are similar even in many parts of the world. So let's start by talking about, our, so because most of our audience are Nigerians uh, in ATP, I will use the Nigerian uh, program of immunization to talk about vaccines. So, for example, the first immunization you get in Nigeria, once the baby is born, it's BCG. Don't, don't worry about the breakdown of what BCG means. It just means BCG. <laughs> right, it so. Yeah, basic is getting, but mothers don't want to remember that. I know you don't need to do. It's BCG. And what does BCG protect? So I always I always get uh, upset when mothers ask them, what's vaccine? Your baby said, uh, I don't know, they just gave vaccine. What was the name? Don't know. It's important that you, as a mother, you should know. And this is one of the things. Remember when we talked about last week when we did our 
uh, how to keep our children healthy in 2019. And one of the things we talked about is immunization. Immunization is very key to making sure that our children are healthy. And so uh, make sure that your children are immunized this year so that they don't necessarily have to die. It's very painful for us when we see children die from preventable disease. I mean, why should somebody die when we already know something that can prevent that death. I mean, that is not right at all. So it's important that mothers know all the immunizations, you know all the vaccines. So the first vaccine is BCG, which is given at birth, and it protects against tuberculosis. So that is, you know, tuberculosis is, is very common in Nigeria. A lot of adults are living with tuberculosis. They're always coughing. And it, for children, unfortunately, tuberculosis can affect almost all the organs of their body. It can damage the brain, it can damage the kidney. So it's not only the coughing or the lungs, pneumonia, it can affect so many things. So it's important that uh, uh, children get BCG immunization. And at the same time, we also give oral polio. I'm sure everybody is familiar with oral polio. I mean, with polio vaccine, we have been trying and we're almost getting to the stage where we want to kick polio out of Nigeria completely. So, uh, but while we are still getting there, we're not yet there, we're almost there. You still need to take your children for polio vaccine and it's a oral vaccine. BCG is a injection, but it's given on the hands. It's also important for you to know where the vaccines are given. So BCG is given on the ham and it's given into the skin, it's given at birth. If your baby misses at birth, no problem, make sure you get it as soon as possible. The oral polio is also given at birth. So. After the, then we also give what we call hepatitis B vaccine. We all know hepatitis. Hepatitis, one of the hepatitis virus is hepatitis B. And it can cause liver damage or liver failure or liver cancer in the long run. So it's important that children are immunized against hepatitis as well because it's also very prevalent in Nigeria. So hepatitis B uh, is also given as birth. So it's very important that we get that right. So those are the three vaccines that your baby should be given immediately your baby is born sometimes because bcg is a very expensive vaccine it's a what we call a multi-dose vaccine it means that once you open it you have to finish it you can't keep it so because of that people don't like to open bcg unless there are many children who are going to take it so that's why some hospitals always have a day for everybody to come for bcg there are vaccines that are what we call single dose vaccines so only one for one child so that one can be given any time of the day because mm -hmm is one per child but there are vaccines that are called multi-dose vaccines multi-dose via vaccine so it's a waste of resource to open one for one child so we people uh our healthcare professionals tend to gather the children together on one day so that's why sometimes they may not give you your bcg as bath because they want you to and they want to give it to, they want to have enough number of children so that when we open it we finish it because we can't keep it and th while we're on that topic i really need to sound that it is important that you take your vaccines in appropriate places i always will recommend that you take your vaccines in the um health centers or the or the teaching hospitals or the government hospitals i'll tell you why i'm saying that because vaccines uh they are expensive but they are given to us for free but there's is important part of vaccine we call cold chain. It is important that the vaccine, right from the time it was manufactured to the time that it is given to your baby, is maintained at a particular temperature. If the vaccine temperature drops or rises, you know, uh, if it rises, it can damage the vaccine. So, and if it damages the vaccine, then it means your um your child is just vaccinated and it's not immunized. So in the government hospitals, they have a way of keeping uh, those vaccines properly so that uh, 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 from, so most of them will go get it right from the storage on the day they need to use it and they maintain the coaching. But sometimes in some hospitals, they want to keep the vaccines and we all know what happened in Nigeria, Nepal takes lives and all that. So for you to keep vaccines in the hospital, you must keep it at a certain fridge. The fridge must be used only for vaccine. It must be maintained at a certain temperature. There's nothing like Nepal takes light, the light has dropped. The, so those are the challenges with private hospital vaccines because sometimes you are not sure that these vaccines have been maintained at the appropriate temperature and so that's why it's important that you as much as possible you take your vaccines unless you're very sure that this hospital is a good standard private hospitals and they always maintain good chain uh, or some of them actually get their vaccines from the uh the government's uh, facilities 
just before they administer it. Otherwise, you are actually better in the long run taking it from the government hospitals because it's free, number one. And number two, you can be sure that the in, in government sets up the code chain has been uh, maintained. So I, I can say that I have quite a number of questions and I will go ahead and take some of those questions and why I keep on. If you want to know more about how the immunization schedule, that's not a problem. We I'm sure we have it everywhere in our group and in our um uh in our uh, uh website articles and all that so but i'll still tell us more about what are those uh vaccines so i'll talk about what we take as baths and that is bcg oral polio and hepatitis b vaccine okay so doris is asking what can be done for a baby okay so doris this morning we're talking about immunization so today is about acp on immunization so uh, I will prefer if you ask us questions about immunization. If you have any question that is not immunization, just go to our Facebook group and drop it there and somebody will answer you uh, on that. But let's focus on our on our topic for today, which is about uh, immunization. Thank you for joining us. Okay, all right. So somebody is asking about vitamin A, very good question. Uh, so, number one, let me start by saying that vitamin A is not a vaccine. So, vitamin A is not a vaccine. Vitamin A is actually a supplement, but we tend to give it with immunization. So, it's, and it's also good because it's, it helps protect against blindness. The, the, the commonest cause of blindness in children is due to vitamin A deficiency. So, it's a very preventable, I mean, the commonest cause of preventable blindness in children is vitamin A deficiency. So, and that's why we give vitamin A to uh, children from every six months. But you can also get vitamin A from your food. You can most of our food these days, like flour, butter, they're always fortified with vitamin A. If you just look at the label, you see whether they've added vitamin A. If you give palm oil, there's vitamin A. If you give carrots or all those vegetables that are like uh, orange and all those, there, there's vitamin A in them, it will get converted back to vitamin A. So vitamin A is very good. And so the but the vitamin A. Uh, also has a, the, the one we normally give as supplement, they, yeah, it has a particular dose range. So usually for the children from six months to one year, we give them the one that is what we call 50,000 units. The one from uh, one year uh, uh, to two years, I think we give them, uh, they will give them 100,000 units. And after that, we start giving them 200,000 units. Now, sometimes some of the vaccines they sell in the shops, they are not as I, the units are not as high. So when they are giving you vaccines in the government, the one that the government normally does the children with, they are those one like I talk about fifty thousand units. I think that one is the um, one is blue. Then there's red one and all that. They have different color depending on the units. So um, so you really need to be sure if you are buying it privately, you need to check the units to make sure that you are actually giving. The appropriate units but if you are not sure then you may really it's not as if vitamin a itself is not effective but it may be a unit that is quite uh, uh low so that may be what is uh, happening um okay uh but thing is asking my two so year nine months i'll be having pains at above la 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 okay uh number one but i think we don't prescribe antibiotics and i'm not even sure whether the child this child needs antibiotics or not please don't just go buying antibiotics it is antibiotic abuse and anyway that's also not what we're talking about today so you can post this your question directly on our facebook group and somebody will ask you but i'll just tell you in short that just take your child to the hospital because even on atp we're not going to uh prescribe um antibiotics for your child you may not need the antibiotics anyway okay Let's move on. I hope Felicia will come back and join me. Um, okay, so Dam Lola is asking, Doctor, please what immunization can my four year baby take? Because I lost the book of the records of a vaccine. Okay, that's not her problem. There are many ways to solve your issues. If, you're, if you have lost your record, the hospital actually keeps the record. So if you have lost the record of your immunization, you can get this from the hospital. So you can go back to the hospital. They also have their own record and they can, you know, retrieve it from. If you remember, if you are seeing the same area where, or, you know, where the S center is, wherever it is that you took them, that you can remember the, 
the timing and the days and stuff like that you can go there and then they will bring back um the uh they will help you feed back your card and document back all your immunization now why since you've asked me that question about um uh, immunization for a four-year-old let me say that in nigeria our immunization strict immunization actually ends at about one year I mean, that's the one you're going to get free from the government. They will still give vitamin A, but like I told you earlier, vitamin A is not immunization. Vitamin A is a supplement, but we give vitamin A up to five years. But the immunization, like a BCG, measles, oral polio, DPT, penta, uh, pneumococcal vaccines, and all that, those one tends to end at um, one year in Nigeria. As at now, where as pediatricians, pediatric association of Nigeria will be in, working with the government to see how to expand our immunization coverage. So um, but we'll see on that. So some of the vaccines, there's supposed to be some of what we call booster vaccines that should be given. And there are also what we call additional vaccines that currently they are not part of the Nigerian program on immunization. So the vaccines that you get free from the government, it's not, that doesn't mean that those are all the vaccines available. There are more vaccines, but basically vaccines are expensive. Even though you are getting it for free, they are expensive. And that's why it's so painful for government that they spend so much vaccine on vaccines and some of us don't go for immunization or you claim to forget. So this year, if you, and one thing I would just like to say that if you forget your immunization and you later remember, don't say, oh, it was supposed to be given at nine months, so I forgot. Now it is tied is 10 months. You can still go back and get your immunization. So that, that's not a problem at all. You can always go back and get your immunization. We can do what we call catch up. Even as long, even as, long as the child is below five, even you can still get your immunization. Whatever immunization the child has mixed, we can always uh, give back. Though there are some that we don't bother giving back because the child may have passed the age where that vaccine is relevant. Something like rotavirus, for example, we may not give it because it's, it protects against diarrhea, which is common between the age of six to 11 months. So if your child is already one year, there's really no additional benefits of taking retrovirus vaccine, for example. But things like pneumococcal vaccine, we will still give because the child can still have pneumonia even up to the age of five years, even after five years. Things like measles, yellow fever vaccine, will still give you because the child can still have those diseases even uh, beyond childhood. So those kind of vaccines will always be given no matter what time you remember and you go for it. So don't feel bad that I've mixed immunization. I don't, I won't go for it. No, those are the Nigerian ones, the program and measure, but the, the immunization, there are immunization that can be given as four years. Since like MMR, that is measles, mumps, rubella vaccines, the, the booster dose should be given as four years, four to six years. So you can go and get that. But like I said, those are vaccines that the government is not paying for. So you can only get them in standard private hospitals and you have to pay for it. That's just the difference, but they are available. If you are interested, you can go for it and they will give it to you. So um, your, even there's also what we call the DT, that is diphtheria technos. It's a booster dose like against the penta. You should also be able to get it as well from four to six years for your children. So, uh, but the government won't give you that. But if you go to a private hospital that is standard, they can provide it for you. So, uh, um, uh, Damilola, I would just encourage that you take your child to um, to the to a standard private, preferably a children's hospital. They can give you the card. They can tell you those immunizations are available after four years. But if you go to the health centers, they can only give you a child vitamin. They won't be able to give to give you the um, other vaccines. Okay, so I can see the question is coming up now. So I'm going to rush in and keep on answering your questions. Um, Cecilia is asking, um, is it compulsory for a child to be given paracetamol after immunization, even when the child shows no signs of fever or all temperature? Thank you, Cecilia. Very, very important question. No, the simple answer is no. You don't have to give uh, paracetamol for every vaccine. In fact, there are some vaccines that children most time will not have fever, so they are okay. But the one that is notorious for actually causing fever in children is what we call the Penta vaccine. So that Penta vaccine is diphtheria, pertussis, tetanus, uh, hemophilia, uh, hemophilus, influenza, 
and the hepatitis B vaccine. So it has five vaccines in one. The diphtheria component of it, from our own experience as pediatricians, is very notorious. It tends to cause fever in children, and fever can be quite high. And when fever is quite high, it can lead to convulsion. And most mothers, when they have that kind of experience with um, uh, DPC vaccine and the child convulse or have fever and convulse, then they are going to sweat. I mean, they are going to swan off the vaccine that they are not going to take immunization again, even though it is not the fault of the vaccine. So, because of that, for deep for penta or DPT, for those who are still taking DPT, we always recommend that you give paracetamol and you give paracetamol after. Because I've seen a lot of mothers who say, even before they go for immunization, they've already started giving the child paracetamol. No. You can give the paracetamol after. I feel if the first time the child is taking DPT, most of them will have fever. Most of them, because the body is trying to, uh, you know, react against immunization and it's bringing up those things. So the fever, the paracetamol does not affect the efficacy of the vaccine because I've seen a lot of uh, things people have put up outside and there are a lot of people that see a lot of jargons and nonsense when it comes to child health who have no idea what they're talking about. The paracetamol does not stop the vaccine effect, efficacy or effectiveness. The paracetamol is bringing down the fever. It has nothing to do with vaccine at all. So we want to bring down the fever so that the fever doesn't cause conversion to the child and leads to the child, you know, um, uh, lead, lead to what we call vaccine uh, associated in it because sometimes DPT can also cause convulsion and we are not sure whether it's a DPT or whether it's a fever so it's very important for us because some children even when you bring an impressed with a fever one of the very very rare side effects of uh, uh, one of the very very rare side effects of uh, DPT vaccine is that it can it it it, it, uh, it, it, it can cause conversion, if not necessarily related to fever, but on its own. So basically, but for other vaccines, you can wait. If you take BCG, most of them will not have fever. If they take measles, yellow fever, most time they don't have fever. But if they have the fever, yes, we can give them the paracetamol. So I hope I've um, been able to answer that question. Okay, so um, uh, uh, we'll continue because we have so many questions now. I don't think we have time to go on with our... Okay, so uh, Felicia, welcome back. Thank you very Thank much, you much Mom. So can you read the next question for us? All right, All right. Okay, okay, the next question is uh, Cecilia Ajibalke. says, good morning, doctor. Please, is it compulsory a child is giving pressure more after immunization? I think you are the old no. question. Okay. No, the next question is about a sister fire, the one that is displaying on the screen. No. Can you say that? Okay, no, maybe no. you're lagging. Okay, so anyway, uh, Kafayat is asking, thank for the teaching. My question is that some mothers say the mark of the vaccine given on the harm is not showing, uh, then the child is required to take another vaccine. Okay, yeah, very thank, thank you so much, Kafayat, for that question. Uh, I know the vaccine you are talking about, so you are talking about the BCG vaccine. So for BCG vaccine, uh, usually it leaves a scar. It leaves a scar. Now, let me first start by saying that Scar or no scar, it doesn't mean your child, it does not necessarily mean that the child has not been immunized. And that's why I gave the example of vaccine, vaccination, and immunization. So when your child is given the BCG, the BCG is a very, um, it's, a, it's one of those vaccines that has a, a technique to the administration. It is an intradermal. It's intradermal. And sometimes, sorry, apologies, but some of our health care professionals, they are not very careful. So sometimes they give it too deep into the muscle or into the... And so because of that, the, the vaccine may not respond. So the child may not have, a, uh, may not have the scar. Now, when when the child, if the child has a scar, we are very reassured already that that child has already been immunized. So we don't need to bother because the scar is a response. Because when you have the BCG immun a vaccine administered, the body response to it is what leaves that scar. So we know that that vaccine actually produced a response, you know, and so that is, uh, that immediately uh, settles. Now, for some children, if there is no scar, we really need to be sure that have we just vaccinated or have we immunized the child? So what we normally do, so it's not every child who doesn't have a scar 
it's not is that we require re-vaccination what we normally need to do first is to for for go um and check whether there's response or not how do we check so we do what we call a bantu test so there's a, a test called mantu test so that mantu test is actually to see whether the body will rest so in other words we're introducing artificial tuberculosis and we want to see whether the body will respond to it so we put what we call a some antigen like something from the uh, tuberculosis uh, part some it's not the full uh, bacteria or something but just something from it if that child has been immunized the child will respond there's there will be some swelling which we can measure and when we measure it we know that oh, yes this child is actually mounting up an immune response then that means that the child has been immunized against tuberculosis then in that case whether the child does not have a scar or not then that child does not require another BCG vaccine. I hope that is clear. But if we do the Mansu test, we we so the Mansu test is that they will give something again under the skin on the forearm, and then they will call you tell you to come back in 48 to 72 hours for them to read it. So when you come back in 48 to 72 hours and they are reading it, then they will see whether the child actually is respond. I mean, if there's a response, there's, there'll be a swelling that is about 10 millimeters the way we measure it don't worry about those details then we know that that child has responded to the vaccine but if we measure it uh there was or there's no there's even no there's nothing the thing is just flat then we know that that child has not re is not mounting up a response to the beast as we expected from a child who has been immunized who has been uh, immunized with the uh, bcg so in that case we need to give that child a BCG again. So as you said, so don't just don't just go and take the BCG again. For for get to your hospital, to a hospital with a pediatrician, preferably or any standard hospital. Let them do the BCG test for your baby. If the BCG test is no is is good response that we expect from a child who has been uh, uh, who has had a BCG vaccine, then that's it. So forget about the scar. But if there is no response, then it means your child uh, needs to be immunized. So I hope that uh, settles you. So you have to go back for the BCG uh, vaccine. Thank you. All right. So, um, yeah, um, okay. Sally Bay is asking me, uh, can um, children be nice for cervical cancer? Very good question. I like the kind of question you are trained to me today. Very nice ones. Uh, yeah, the answer is um, no. HPV, that's human papilloma virus vaccine, is not yet part of the Nigerian uh, program on immunization, what we call MPI. So this is one of those vaccines I was talking about that, they are available, but it's not free. What it means, it is available in the country. It is available in the hospital. Even some government hospitals can get it for you, but it is not free. So you have to pay for it. And I will encourage you to do that. And we are hopeful that very soon, you know, for those of us who have been around for a while, you, you know that initially when we started, um, uh, some vaccines are just being introduced. Like at the time that the Mokoka vaccine was very expensive, people were paying like twenty thousand for the vaccine because it was not part of MPI. But today, now the Mokoka vaccine is already free and it's part of the government's immunization. That's very good. There's a time that uh, rotavirus are expensive and people have to pay for it. But thank God, now in some states, I don't know whether it's all over the states now, but in most if you at least some states of the of the country you can get rota for free so hopefully very soon hpv vaccine will be free as well and wish you can get it for free from um from the government hospital but as at this morning until i get any other information it is not yet free so it doesn't mean you can't get it from the government hospital it just means that they will have to call the the vaccine company to bring it for you and you have to pay cash for it. So, but it's a very good vaccine to give to our children because um, it's very important. And then you ask at what age you should be given. So usually we recommend from age of seven, seven to seven to ten years. You can start taking. Especially the girls, it's very important. You start giving them uh, HPV, but the boys also need it as well. So, it, so even though we say it's cervical cancer, it's not only the girls that need HPV. The boys also um, need it as well. Thank you so much. All right, let's move on. I have so many questions and I'm trying to see 
if uh, I can answer all your questions. Okay, I think I've answered Cassie's Cafeyard's question. Uh, okay, somebody is asking me about seizure. Uh, so, uh, Joyce, you really don't just come online and ask what medicine to give to a child who has seizure. That child must be seen by a specialist, a neurologist, and they will do things like ease EEG and things like that before they recommend medication. Please, this convulsion is not, it's not even a medication. A mother will just say, go and buy that, go and buy that. No, this is something you really need to go to the hospital for. So I actually wouldn't have answered the question like that because we are really discussing, um, uh, um immunization but because it's something so important i really want you to to get it and that's why i answer please take that chat to see a pediatric neurologist get somebody to give you a referral letter and make sure you see one urgently it's very very urgent okay so somebody is uh doris is asking doctor is there any i'm giving a child to prevent cancer now um your question is so wide so there are cancers that are preventable there are cancers that are not preventable so so i really need to be sure what you're asking doris if you don't mind can you be specific so we can prevent all cancers i'm sure if we can develop vaccines that can prevent all cancers i mean that would, that would be wonderful because cancer is still one of the main killers but things like cervical cancer like the question i just answered can be somehow prevented like um you can give a, uh, a HPV vaccine can prevent cervical cancer, for example. Hepatitis B uh, virus uh, vaccine, HPV, HPV, there's HPV. Let me write them out so that people don't get it confused. So there's HPV and HBV. Okay. So, um, Okay, I'm not sure it's showing. Okay, so let me just refresh so that you can see what I just wrote. Okay, let's just move on. So, um, Okay, so I'm back. I just want to type the two vaccine because I'm not sure many people are getting it. So there's HBV and there's HPV. So the HBV is the uh, hepatitis B virus vaccine and it protects against liver diseases, liver cirrhosis and liver cancer in the long run. HPV is about the, um, what's it called? It's about the uh human papilloma virus and it protects against cervical cancer so those are the ones that are preventable so but majority of the other cancers right now we don't have vaccines against that so uh, i think that is the uh answer to that so let me go on i really have so many questions today wow i'm really struggling to go through all of them <laughs> okay that's good let's just move on Okay, so I've answered Doris' question. Let's move on to the next question. So, Olalege is asking, uh, can a child of two to three months old get infected with chicken pox? What measure can one take to protect? Very, very, very important question. Yeah. Okay, so yes, the simple answer is yes. A child of two to three months can get infected with chicken pox, especially, so before the age of six months, most babies are protected by the immunization their mother has had. So if the mother has had um, a chicken pox before, and so she will likely pass the antibodies against chicken pox to a baby. And so that is why even though, for example, we've not given your baby measles vaccine, we've not given your baby all those vaccines, your baby, a newborn baby is still protected against them. But from six months, the baby, the immunization, the, all those vaccines, all those antibodies transferred by the mother to the baby, they begin to wear off. And when they begin to wear off, so that's why we now need to give the baby 
you know, are over. So there are, I don't want to go into the, the, the details of why we give certain vaccines at certain time. There are a lot of science behind it. But let me just say that if you as a mother, you have had chicken pox, I will expect that you will protect your baby against chicken but that does not mean you should deliberately expose the baby to chicken pox. Like Ibra would say, for the Russian or Ubud or Shara. In other words, even though you may think, oh, I have this immunization protection, but it doesn't mean that you have to go expose yourself unnecessarily. So if your brother, uh, if another child has chicken pox, you need to keep that child, if possible, away from other children who don't have chicken pox. That's the honest truth. I know it could be very hard for you as a mother because you don't know uh which what, what to do and all that but that's the best option in some places we also have what we call the passive immunization so what we have been talking about today is more what we call the active immunization this is immunization that can protect you for a very 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 long time but we also have what we call passive immunization this are passive immunization that we give you what we call antibodies so this protects you in for a short time they protect you only briefly for a short time so there are Antibodies, what we call um, gamma globulins against chicken pulse, but they are very expensive. They are very difficult to come by, which we can give to the baby, which can protect that baby. They will start protecting the baby immediately for a short while, but they are really very expensive. So the best option is to see if you can avoid the baby being in contact with other person that already has... Um, uh, chicken paws and then see what you can do. But if you can have access, if you live in a country where we have access to uh, um, what's it called, we have access to um, the um, immunoglobulin and all that, then you can also give that to the child. Okay, let's move on. Uh, oh, my questions are not showing. Let me just refresh. is asking is it a problem or are there risks if a child get double dose of bcg or any other vaccine it's a waste of resources really but there's usually most vaccines don't have like um, side effects because you take double dose or nothing like that now so don't worry don't panic if you're i know sometimes as human beings our healthcare professionals they make errors or you mothers as well you also <laughs> get us confused maybe the child has come you come again so there is usually no problem with that, so don't worry about that. If a child has been, if a child got double immunization, that that child should be fine. So you don't need to uh, worry about it. It's okay. So don't worry about it. Um, but as much as possible, don't do that because it's a waste of our resources. That vaccine could have demonized another child. And like I keep telling you, mother, vaccines are actually very expensive. The fact that we are getting it free does not mean it's cheap. It's costing somebody a whole lot of money. So please try and avoid uh, vaccine wastage. Okay, I see Scafaya is asking, oh, uh, if the mark is given, okay, I think I've answered I've answered your question. Your baby for funny to be tested for us to know. Uh, for us to know whether your baby is immunized or not. And if your child is not immunized, if your child doesn't respond to BCG, they will give another BCG to your child. That's just a simple thing. Forget about whether it's given properly or not. There are many reasons why the vaccine may not have taken, but the most important thing for you now is not why it happened. The most important thing is for you to for one know whether your child has been immunized because that child is at risk of tuberculosis. The child is still at risk of tuberculosis. The child is not immunized. So what you need to do is go for the tuberculosis, the, the mantle test. If the child did the mantle test and the child does not show a response and they do a check secretary, the child does not currently have a tuberculosis, then they will give BCG again. That's the best option in your instance. Okay, Shifa Obelo is asking, when is that five in one vaccine given to the child? Hi, see this question. When is it given? Okay, so 
five in one vaccine is a penta vaccine and it is given at six weeks, 10 weeks and 14 weeks. So I hope, and I, this is one of the vaccines that mothers tend not to complete. And in fact, when we want to know whether people are really going for immunization, we use the penta as a way of knowing. So if when people take the third dose of penta, then we know that really they are good in um, keeping to the immunization schedule. So penta should be, so penta should be given at six weeks. That is, that's when baby is almost like two months. 10 weeks, almost like three months, then uh, 14 weeks. So that's when it should be given. And let me just say that if you mix any of them, you can go back and get them no matter how old your baby is. Don't say, oh, I've mixed it, I've mixed it, that's it. No, you can always go back. And I think that's one message I really want us to take away from today. You can always go back and get your immunization. Okay, thank you. Uh, Jai, please post this question directly on the group wall and somebody will answer it. We are, I want to focus on immunization and we don't have as much time today. Okay, I think I've answered this already. So there's no problem with overdose of vaccine. Okay, it's like some of my questions have been duplicated by my moderator. So moderators, please, when you are posting a question, if you see somebody else has posted, don't bother posting it again. So I don't keep on doing Lots of repetition, repetition. Okay, yeah. Okay, so uh, Oludu Mila is asking, uh, money doctor, my baby got the BCG vaccine and there was a reaction that made the arm swell like a boil, but the positive come out, you do nothing. Just do, do nothing. It depends on how bad it is. If it's a small one, because that is actually a sign that your baby reacted to the vaccine and is that boil, what you call boil, it's not really a boil actually, but it's what is going to turn into the BCG scar. So some babies can have excessive reactions. Some babies have normal reaction. So it just form a little thing there and then it become like a, 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 a pause, then it will heal, then it become a scar. Perfect. But sometimes it can be very big in some babies and it really looks so frightening to the mother. So in other words, maybe it's having what would look like an excessive reaction to the BCG vaccine. So in that case, you need to see your pediatrician. There's something we can do in that case. Um, what we need to do in that case is to give your child some medication. I won't tell you the name of the medication, but just see your pediatrician. If it's, if it's not so bad, you can leave it. Like I said, it will it will eventually clear out, it's, uh, so you don't need to worry. But if you are worried, see a pediatrician who will decide whether it is what we call BCGitis or a BCG abscess, which are like side effects of that meds uh, of giving BCG vaccine. It's not a problem at all for the baby. We just need to give them something like a, a particular medication with for like six weeks and it will clear out. But it's just not the normal antibiotics, so it's not boil. So don't go and buy ampicloss. Don't go and buy all those things you people normally buy. <laughs> Please go and see. I am very, very particular about saying go and see a pediatrician because even the medication you are going to use is not something you can just buy over the counter and it's not the regular antibiotics. So if your baby has a very big boil, let me use your terminology, or a wound, very big one from BCG, you need to see a pediatrician who will give you appropriate um, medication. Okay, thank you. Uh, Esther is asking, Rota is not available in Undo states. Okay, thank you for telling us. And um, when I paid for it, when I went to Oshun states, I paid for it. Okay, thank you so much. But I know that some states, so if you have Rota free in your states, so you are you to post so that we know that it's not a few states have it free, honestly, but maybe it's those who are free, it's free. Let us know too, so that we know. I know it's not in all the states. Yes, I agree. But a few states, they are still rolling in. So usually when we introduce new vaccine, let me tell you what we normally do. We, we do it in stages. So we have what we call the rolling out phase. So we'll start with maybe six states. And then we'll monitor it. Is it working? Is it good? Is it, then we'll roll it out to more states. That, I mean, that is uh, economics and that's how government things work. So whenever they start something new, everybody's not going to get it the same day. But with time, with time, I'm sure by the end of 2018, uh, 19, sorry, we're in 2019 now, everybody should be getting it for free. So don't worry. Okay, Lillian is asking, uh, my child was supposed to take the pneumococcal vaccine at 14 weeks, but they don't have it. Okay, it's going to be four months, no can. Yes, 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 yes. That's what I've been saying. If your baby means any immunization for any reason, you forgot, you travel out of town. By the way, 
traveling out of town is not a reason to miss immunization. It's not. That card that they gave you, that immunization card, it is valid in any part of the country. It is valid. So if you travel to Kutuwenji, you can take your card and take immunization in Kutuwenji, even though your card was issued to you in uh, Badagri or in Ikorodu. So mothers don't realize that. So we went home for the festival and then I couldn't go for immunization. No, 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 that's not an excuse. You can go to the health center in your village. That's why we have health centers in almost all the local governments. And you can go to any of them and show them your card. This might be a second vaccine. This is the next vaccine. This is the date that is due. So that they know that it's the appropriate time. And they will give it to your child. And it will be signed. And it's valid. So you don't have to worry that, okay, I'm traveling. No, then my child will be in simulation. That's not an excuse at all. But if for any reason, anyway, you see mixing, maybe the child was sick. And let me say by uh, saying that not all sickness are contraindication to immunization. So we have what we call relative contraindication. So, if a child is sick, but the child is not sick enough not to go out, the child is eating, the child is playing, the child is going to, that child can still go for immunization. That sickness is not serious enough not to go for immunization. But the sickness that will be serious enough not to go for immunization is if there's a serious fever and the child is on bed, the child is on injection, the child is very ill, yes. But a child who is, uh, okay, I'm coughing a little and it's running up and down, or I'm having little diarrhea, it's running up and down. That child can still go for immunization. But those are the reasons why mothers miss immunization that are really not uh, sufficient reason for missing the immunization. Okay, Bukun, thank you for joining us. Hi to you as well. Um, Adijala is asking, yes, 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 yes. If you've missed immunization, at least if there's any message you guys can take away from this morning, any immunization you have missed, go back and get it. No problem. And if any extensor person arrives to tell them your potential say you can come back for it. Because I know some of them don't like you guys coming back, but really they should give your immunization. Yes, your child can still go for the fifth. I don't know which one is the 15 month that you miss. You see, you see intramuscular polio. Uh, if that is the case, you can still go for it, okay? So no problem. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, good morning, my Is it respiration determination? Then what matters if it's, if a circle that's usually on the bottom changes color? Which immunization are you talking about? Number one, immunization is not something mothers buy. It's not something you administer by yourself. And if you are just joining at the beginning, although I said that I prefer you take your immunization at the government hospitals, uh, health centers. Reason because health centers don't keep their vaccines, they don't. So they collect it the same day they are going to give the immunization, they use it, whatever is left is returned uh, or disposed. So they don't keep immunization with them. And that is very important. So there's no uh, danger of the vaccines getting expired. There's no danger of it uh, losing potency. There's no problem with coaching. Sometimes in the private hospitals, some try because it's profit, you know, they, they, they want not to lose money. Some of them have very good fridges and very good power supply, then they can keep it. But some don't, and they won't tell you, and you won't know that the vaccine has, uh, there's been a break in the cold chain. So that's why I always recommend you go to health centers because health center vaccines, there's nothing like it's expired. So if, I don't know how you mean the vaccine has expired, I don't know, maybe you need to give me more information because number one, you are not supposed to be the one to check the expiration vaccine. The nurses do it and they will write it even in your card. They write the batch number of the vaccine. They will write the expiry date. Some people do. I know not everybody do that, but those are the things that they can check. But um, uh, uh, they should ideally not be giving you expired vaccines. They shouldn't give you expired vaccines. If you take a, if you if you take your immunization in government hospital, you should not be getting expired vaccines. So I really think you should you should check that as well. Uh, maybe you need to give me more information on what you are trying to say. I'm not so sure. Yeah, so somebody is asking me, but Queen saying good morning. Yeah, I really have, uh, why must the time be swollen? Yes, okay. So that's the DPT vaccine. So the DPT vaccine is given at six weeks. So it's not four weeks, it's six weeks. So I'm not sure. Maybe you, maybe that was a typo error, but it's 6, 10, 14. Okay, so. It's an intramuscular vaccine, and like we, we rightly said, it's uh, the Pensa vaccine, rather. It's about five vaccines in one. So, and it's given deep into the muscle. So, because it's given deep into the muscle, there's some bleeding. 
there is some bleeding. It's one of the side effects of the vaccine. There is some bleeding after the immunization. And so what happened is, what I re recommend for you is that when you notice the swelling, don't rub it. Don't put kerosene. Don't put hot water. Just get ice block and put it on it. The ice block, because when you rub Okay, sorry, I apologize. My internet went off. I just refreshed. Sorry, I'm so sorry for that. Uh, thank you so much for those of you who stayed still with us. Okay, and our time is up right now. Um, oh my goodness, I'm not sure I'm able to finish all the questions. Uh, uh, um, my goodness. Okay, so I was answering the question about Boku was asking about why the swelling. I wasn't too sure how much of that you had, but basically what I was trying to say is that it's because of the bleeding into the muscle when the penta vaccine is given. So what you really need to do is to make sure that you put ice block, not hot water, not um not uh, rubbing it because those will make it to, to 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 bleed more. So what you really need to do is to make sure that you put the ice block on it intermittently and it will it will go all right thank you so much okay somebody is telling me that rota is also not available in open state so i hope the government is watching the live atp live so that they would know I, i'm sure they know those of it that don't have it okay 
uh, uh, Saya Jaya really said, post your question on the group. We don't, we're we talking about immunization today and um, we can answer the other somebody else to answer it. Okay, so um, uh, Ade Yamo is just joining us. What is Rota? So Rota vaccine is a vaccine against Rota virus. The rotavirus protects against diarrhea. The commonest cause of diarrhea in children is rotavirus. So that's what uh, rota protects against. So it's given as six, it's an oral vaccine like polio and it's given as six weeks and 10 weeks. Some give it as 10 and 14 weeks as well. So or six and 14 weeks, but it's two doses and uh, and it's just to protect against uh, uh, rotavirus infection that causes diarrhea. Okay, yeah, somebody is asking, is a toddler at risk living with a child? With Any child who is exposed to a child who has a disease that is contagious is at risk. If you are exposed to somebody else who has a contagious disease, you are at risk, unless you are being immunized. So if your toddler has been immunized, maybe, maybe protected, but if your toddler has not been immunized, then you really need to make sure your toddler is immunized against uh, chicken pox. Okay. Yeah, so Esther is asking, can a mother who is breastfeeding take HPV? Uh, yes, I think you can. I don't think it has to do with breastfeeding. No problem. You can go get it. Okay, thank you. All right. Uh, somebody else is telling me. Uh, I'm trying to. Uh, Oludu Mila is saying Rota is free in Lagos State. Oh, thank you. So somebody is telling us. So those of you who said Rota is not free in Ogun State or Shun State, maybe you may come to Lagos State. If I call general hospital specifically, so you can go get it there if you don't mind the travel. If you, I, think, I think it's cheaper to get it there than I mean than to pay for it because your travel is not up to tell. You. I don't know how much they sell it, but that's the honest truth. Okay, uh, Opolua is asking. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Okay. Thank you for the feedback. Okay, I've answered your question. She's giving me a feedback. Uh, I think I've answered this question about Lori Juliet and immunization. Okay. I've answered uh, the Allah about Ruta. Um, okay. Somebody is asking me, but well, right. there are so many questions today. Uh, yes. So, okay. Somebody is asking about, yes, like I rightly said, the government uh, is introducing immunization. And I think what that mommy is talking about is the vitamin A for 15 months because this thing keeps changing. Uh, the last immunization on the MPR is measles and yellow fever, which ends at uh, nine months. So, but we, all, we keep giving vitamin A every six months to five years. But I think before, but now I think some of the governments have changed it again to make it to uh, to to make it. Um, uh, nine months and 15 months only. So I guess that's what that mommy is talking about. But it depends on what is, because some of, some of these things are not yet universal yet. So just check, see, everybody has immunization card. So your immunization card, check what is written there and go for what your immunization card says, okay? So if you don't have 15 months on your immunization card, then it means it's ended. If you have on your immunization card, it's, a, it's a, okay. Yeah, Olori is saying okay. Okay, so she give me more information about that inspiration and all that. So you went to your private hospital exactly. That's where you should have started from because I am very sure that in government hospitals they are not going to give you expired vaccine. Like, but, and I know why because they don't stop vaccines. They go get it that same day. And there are people whose job is to make sure that the vaccine is kept at the right temperature. They they dispose when it's they have all these checks and balances. Very 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 very. Uh, at, I mean, essential that they do in government, uh, our federal lab, uh, vaccine lab. So they are very, very meticulous about it. So, and that is why I started in the morning by saying, I always prefer you take immunization in government hospitals. I, I didn't know somebody has had this experience. So I think this further strengthens. I'm not saying that all private hospitals are, that are very good standard, very good children hospitals. You know those kind of hospitals, but you also know those kind of hospitals that if they give you vaccine, you will really need to think twice because you can see that when you are there, the light has gone off for one hour. I mean, if the light is going off, where are they keeping the vaccines? The vaccines must be maintained, the caution must be maintained all the time. Or else you are just taking vaccine, you are not taking immunization because if the, if the vaccine is not properly preserved at uh, the right temperature it's as 
it, it is has lost its potency. So if they give it to your child, your child will not respond, even though your child has been vaccinated, but your child has not really been immunized. So I don't know about it. So I, I'll worry. I'll just say some of you arguing and arguing with these people. Just go and get your medication where your mind will be at rest. So uh, so please don't. That place is very risky from everything you are telling us. It's very, 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 very risky a place to take your immunization. Okay. I think I'll finish all the questions. Wow. I managed to finish all the questions. I thought I would be able to finish that. Okay. Fine. That's good. All right. So uh, if I've not answered your question, you can let me know. But I think I've tried to answer all the questions on immunization. Uh, so we're rounding off now. So we've been talking today about immunization. I don't know what happened to my my colleague was supposed to be working with me. She seemed to have disappeared. I know we had a lot of internet connectivity challenges. Um, so no problem about that. But so we've been talking about immunization and uh, I've answered your question about is a child at risk of uh, any child who is at any child who is exposed to a child with another infectious disease is at risk of having that disease unless that child has been immunized. So that's what you need to do. So I, I've answered that. I've answered all the risk questions as well. So I think our time is up. We need to go now. Uh, thank you so much for joining me this morning. And like I rightly said, this program has been brought to you uh, by Ask the Pediatrician Foundation and our, our, uh, what we normally do on Ask the Pediatrician is to improve your child health uh, intelligence. So is 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 by and one of the topics we've talked about today is one of the most important topic of all. I'm talking about immunization. And just to recap by saying immunization is something that protects and prevents uh, uh, children from having um, diseases. And it is important that you take the immunization and you take it at the right time. If you mix it, no problem. But you can always go back for uh, uh, you can always go back for what we call catch up immunization. So the, the messages I want to take home to I, I'm just going to give you take home messages today. Uh, let me just before I give my take home message, let me just say that if at the end of this. Uh, session, you see, have questions, that's not a problem. Like I said, this program has been brought to the courses of Act of Generation Foundation. If you don't know what ATP is, we are a foundation that promotes child health intelligence through the social media. So we have our Facebook group, we have our Facebook page, we have our website, we are on Instagram, we are on Twitter. So if you have questions, you can, the best way to get your question answered is to go to our Act of Generation Facebook group. And you can drop your questions there. And we have moderators who work 24-6. We work from Monday to Saturdays. We don't work on Sundays so that we can have a break. And you should drop your questions. Somebody is going to pick up your question, is going to approve it, and then is going to answer the questions for you. So if, even after you watch all this, you can see drop. Please, when you finish watching this video, don't drop your questions in comments after we've gone off life because if you drop it i will to say it. but if you take it to our facebook group if you just go to facebook and type ask the pediatricians you will see a group pop up so that group is our group you can drop your questions there. if you click join the group then you can enter the group it's a closed group and then you can drop your question and somebody will answer the questions for you and within 40 some two hours we try to answer your questions so you can drop it alternatively you can email us on ask at askthepediatricians.com and we also try and answer your question if you want to, especially if you want to be anonymous. And if you want to know more about immunization, we have articles. Some of these questions you are asking me, we've done it before on our, um, what we call it, um, uh, our group discussion. So we've written articles on them. So if you go to our website, which is www.askthepediatricians.com, then you will be able to see all the questions on immunization. We've, I'm sure we've answered all your questions before and we can answer them again. And so that is just to let you know. And our group, our foundation, we are, apart from what we do online in terms of uh, education on social media, we also do community medical outreaches. We usually do like at least twice in a year. We go to um, on Children's Day. We do Children's Day community medical outreaches, and on 
Independence Day, we do Independence Day, community medical outreaches. We've been doing a lot in Lagos, and last year, yeah, we did more. We went to Monse, we went to Abia, we went to Open State, we went to Abuja, we went to Oshun State, we went to Kwara. Uh, so, um, this time around, so we went to Kwara, I'm not sure we went to Oshun State, but this year, we are going to go to all the states in Nigeria. And so if you like what we're doing and you want to be part of Ask the Pediatrician, you can send us and you can reach us either through our Facebook page. Through, just I want to be part of ATP. You can also send us uh, a, a message on our phone number. Uh, let me try and see if I can type that on the screen. Uh, okay. Um, I think it's all five six nine. Yeah, somebody if you don't know, if you know our number, just put this for me so like I can put it up. I'm not sure whether I got that number correctly, but anyway, if you go on our page, we'll, we'll send you our numbers. Then you can email, you can send us a message, you can call us, you can do all that, and then we can, you know, uh, we can be parts of what you, uh, you, uh, you we, we can. We can you, we can tell you how you can be part of what we are doing on Axe Pediatrician. If you want to donate, you can support us. There are many ways where you can uh, support Axe Pediatrician Foundation. And so, and this program happens every week, uh, every Saturday at 10 a.m. So we look forward to you being part of us. We, we look forward to you supporting us. And that is our account details. If you want to be part of what we're doing, you can also sponsor this ATP Life program. You can you can sponsor us. Uh, you can advertise your products. You can advertise your services on our ATP Life. And we'll be very happy. And you can be sure that if you advertise on ATP Life, all the mothers and caregivers of children, they are they are watching and your products and services they are going to really go far and wide and you can also advertise on our group and page as well so we all these resources is for us to promote child health intelligence further all all over all over nigeria and hopefully all over the world so thank you so much i'm very once again i apologize for all the technical issues we have this morning but i'm happy that we're able to finish through and we're able to answer every question and if you see have question there will still be a rebroadcast. You can post your question directly on our Facebook group and we'll be able to answer it. So thank you so much for joining me this morning. I am Dr. Bumi Boyde, um, and it's been wonderful sharing with you. So have a wonderful weekend. Bye, everyone.